All right, so let's see if we can get this a pat. My Half of my tools are outside right now because I'm working on a project fixing up some old cast iron pans. So everything's outside. I'm also working on a snowblower. I went and tried the snowblower and it didn't start. So that's why you try that stuff in October um, or September as it is now. Um, so I was working on that. Everything's downstairs. So here is the box and we got a mouthpiece in here. And we're going to see what it looks like. Okay. So what a huge difference wow um so everything else on it is the same the outside finish um a little bit here at the tip got cleaned up as a part of the work um but all the other you know not much was done to it uh, on the outside all right so right here i misspoke a little bit i was trying to say that he didn't modify the baffle far from original uh, I said the wrong thing. I said he didn't really work on the baffle much. Obviously, he worked on it a lot. It's beautiful. Um, but he didn't take too much baffle away. Patina is really just corrosion for something that isn't valuable. Um, so he marked it 105 right there on the side. Um, so it sounds like we got it to the opening we were looking for. Uh, looks really nice. Boy, what a difference. It's actually got a tip rail now. Woo! Uh, and it didn't get too thinned out at the top. So we'll throw some reeds in the water and we'll uh, give this girl a try. Also, he signed it EG, as you can see. Eric Giefenhagen. I think I'm saying that right. I could be saying it wrong. I say almost everything wrong. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays. Really, really looks nice. Howdy y'all, welcome to Saxophone Geek. As you saw, we unboxed the newly refaced um, Florida link, I guess. It's USA, it says on it, but I think it's earlier. I don't think it's an early Babbitt. Um, doesn't really matter. All we're hoping is to have a nice playing link. So we're gonna try it. I've not tried it yet. As you are here on the first play test, I try not to bang my saxophone on a thing here. I got five reeds. Brand new reeds ready to go. Um, we're gonna start with number 70. That's my numbering system. I just number them as I open them up. So, put a reed on here. Uh, he stamped this 105, so it's about a seven star. Um, and uh, my only request was I asked for, you know, a bit of a shorter facing. I prefer a, a shorter facing, helps me with the altissimo notes. Uh, personally, that's what I've sort of, over the years, become accustomed to. So, let's go ahead and give it a try on the first read. Almost ready for you. Okay. <laughs> short to play on bad reads, right? Seventy-two. 
This one might be a little better. Might not. I was a little more forgiving. Probably because it's a little on the softer side compared to the other ones. It's still edgy. One of the things that's nice about the vintage links is that the ligature doesn't fall down past the rest of the mouthpieces. On a lot of modern metal mouthpieces, these little ligatures, ligatures fall right off. You're probably not seeing what I'm trying to show you. But this ligature stops right about there. On all the Ted Klum mouthpieces, for example, the back of the mouthpiece isn't thick enough and the ligatures literally slide all the way off onto the neck, which drives me crazy. So at least with a vintage link, the ligature sits on there and doesn't it just makes it easier to deal with everything. I don't know why these guys don't make mouthpieces like that. But they make what they make, right? Buy it or don't. Best read so far. <laughs> It's not as edgy. The, the darkness of this reed is holding it back a little bit. test of the newly replaced, re refaced Florida-ish link. Um, plays pretty cool. Certainly a lot easier to play and produces more sound because it's a little more open. Um, it's not too edgy. There's still a lot of that edge because it's a, it's a lot of baffle for a mouthpiece like this. Uh, it's certainly for how I, I play. But I think it'll be good. Um, try some different reads. You know, three of the reads were a lot harder than the other two. Um, that's normal inconsistency, and then some people would say, well, I'll just play softer reeds. In fact, on soprano, I've already gone down a size or two. Um, you know, our playing changes as we go, right? You learn, you get better, you age physically. So we sort of, sort of adjust a little bit sometimes. Um, 
So maybe this would be a good candidate, at least just to go down to a three and a half uh, and see if we can uh, get a little more out of more of the reads, but uh, not worrying about that today. Certainly uh, neat to see it. Thanks for being on the journey. I'll keep you updated. I'll shoot some live video of some gigs, maybe if I play it on some gigs and get some uh, idea what that's like. Um, and I'm hoping to find that I can use it a good amount. Um, so thanks, Eric Evenhagen. It's pretty, first impression is very cool. Uh, so uh, thanks to him, and, uh, and thanks for watching Saxophone Geek. Hope you enjoyed the video, and there'll be more to come on this mouthpiece. Thanks. <laughs>